Join us as we make potatoes au gratin this holiday season. Hey everybody, welcome back to Coupe de Grill. We are super excited to share our potatoes au gratin recipe with you in honor of Thanksgiving coming up next week. This is a family recipe, but we'd love to hear what you think in the comments and maybe what you've done in the past with a similar recipe. So first for our potatoes au gratin, we're going to take our potatoes, we're going to peel them all, uh, which is what I have these here for, and then we're going to coat them in butter, wrap them in foil, and put them in the oven, and I'm going to get them baked until they're kind of squishy, um, not like mashed potatoes, but just a, a nice squishy consistency. I'll show you what I mean. You don't have to peel them if you like your potatoes au gratin to have uh, the skins. Red potatoes, I think the skin on red potatoes is really delicious. Um, just make sure you uh, <clears throat> really clean them well, I guess is all I can say. Uh, you don't want someone to have a bite of delicious, cheesy au gratin potatoes and a big chunk of dirt. Nobody likes that. So, um if you want to leave the skins on, you absolutely can. I am, of course, doing the recipe how my mom taught me. So uh, then maybe this is the old school way, but this is what we did growing up. Then get these all peeled. Well, I've got all our potatoes are peeled and, you know, nice and naked. I've rinsed them off so they're clean. Um, you can see that some of these have a little hole in them. That's because I like to pull out as much of these imperfections as I possibly can um, before they bake because as they bake, they're going to kind of push those imperfections to the surface and you're going to end up cutting them off anyway. So uh, we're going to stab these with a fork. This sounds crazy. Um, you can use a knife or you can use a fork. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use a fork. And I'm really just going to kind of wiggle it. Woo! Not loose potato. I'm going to put it in and wiggle it. This sounds so weird. But it's really just to kind of get the butter, you know, give it an opening. Give the butter an opening. So they're already porous. You may not have to do this. It's just a thing, like I said, that my mom always did. So I just like to kind of pull them apart a little bit. So we're just doing that with all of these babies. And then I will show you uh, how to butter them. So I'm gonna take a stick of butter and I'm gonna go ahead and melt it in a large mug. Um, I like to do it this way. My mom would let the butter warm on the counter and then use a Ziploc bag to kind of mush it around on the potatoes. This way it's faster for me because I don't always have warm butter and it works just as well. Um, I use a large mug because you can dip your whole potato in the mug. I'm gonna heat up my butter. Okay, so I've got our butter all nice and melted. Hopefully you can see that. Um, the idea is to coat the potatoes with butter, put them on our foil and wrap them up. Then we're gonna bake them. So let's go ahead. I'm going to start with one of our bigger ones to suck up some of this butter. Um, so usually I like to use the spoon slash hand combination and kind of just get my potatoes coated. And we never have a shortage of butter in this house. So if you run through all your butter, you can always go ahead and melt some more. Um, so let's see. Then once you get your potato here, I like to make a little, you know, pocket envelope, I guess. So I'm gonna go like this. And we're gonna fold it down. And then you don't want the butter or any of the juices leaking out into your oven. So you'll just fold the ends. You don't want it to be super tight. It needs room to breathe a little. So our potato is deep in here and we've got a little bit of a pocket. Um, we're gonna go ahead and place these on a baking sheet. And we'll probably end up using two or three baking sheets. And I'll show you those in a minute. When you're dipping your potatoes, it kind of reminds me of dying Easter eggs. Uh, you, you know, fishing them out with the spoon and everything. But one way to think about this. 
like I said, there's multiple ways to butter your potatoes. <laughs> we have uh, several friends coming over this weekend, so I am doubling my recipe. I'm going to go ahead and post the full recipe for one normal size in the description. Um, so this is the doubled version, just so you know. And growing up, we made potatoes au gratin for all of the major holidays. So it's odd to me when um, Mr. DeGrill's family wants mashed potatoes. I'm like, well, that's not traditional, but it is. I think that's what normal people probably have for holidays. Um, we just didn't. So. Now I will say I like to keep my larger potatoes on one sheet pan and my smaller potatoes on the other sheet pan because the size of the potato is going to depend on how quickly they cook. So we've got our oven set to 350 degrees. Um, this pan of potatoes is going to be done faster than this one. That's completely fine. But for me, when I'm uh, pulling them out to see how soft they are, I want to be able to pull out one sheet uh, at a time knowing that the whole sheet is probably going to be done. So uh, it's up to you how you want to arrange them. Obviously, you know, if you're in a hurry, you probably don't have time to really think that through every time. And sometimes you might end up with only one or two small potatoes and the rest being medium or large. So it really just depends. But that's the way I like to try to plan it out. It's easier for me uh, and makes the process a little bit faster. I also like to put my larger potatoes toward the bottom of the oven and my smaller potatoes toward the top. I feel like they cook more evenly and at a normal speed. Um, again, it depends on your oven and depends on how uh, quick you want them done. Okay, so these were in the oven for 30 minutes. This is the small potatoes. <laughs> And if you can see this, these little itty bitties are very, very squishy. So they're done. Squishy, squishy. And it's hard to tell with the big gloves, but they are, oops, see that? Very squishy. Um, this one's more medium, also done. Yay. And this was the pan that was closer to the top. Like I said, it kind of, to me, for the medium, for the small ones, it makes them cook better. Um, that one is also done. And that one is done. All right, let's pull out the second pan. Now I doubt it, but you never know. This one's pretty big. Oh, also done, fantastic. So I like to squeeze them all just to make sure some are harder than others like this one, definitely not done. So this one was done. That one's done. And we just want them to be just like a little squishy. They're gonna be easier to cut up because uh, we're gonna dice these. And then um, they'll be easier to cook, so, in our deliciousness. This one is also done. Gee, I wonder why this one is so hard. Wow, that one's just very, very hard still. So it's gonna go back in by itself, which is really odd. Moving that one up to the top rack, and uh, we will be back. Next, I have grated some uh, Colby cheese. You can use cheddar or Colby Jack or regular Colby, whatever your preference is. I had a lot of Wisconsin sharp cheddar, and not everybody likes that as much as I do, so we're going to go with a milder cheese. Um, I also have some grated Parmesan that we're going to put in it. We need salt. Uh, we need some flour, a very tiny bit of that. And then of course we've got our potatoes. We need another half a stick or a full stick of butter. And we need some milk. So we're gonna go ahead and get started on our roux and create a cheese sauce for our potatoes. All right, so to start our roux for the potatoes au gratin, we are going to take our 
lovely stick of butter and we're going to just go ahead and melt that. Um, I highly recommend you melt it at a low heat even though it might take a little bit longer. You don't want this to be super super hot when you mix in your flour because it's going to mess up your roux and you want to have a good base for the cheese sauce. We are almost melted. Once it's completely melted, we're going to go ahead and start adding our flour. All right, so now our butter is all melted and delicious. Um, like and her husband. Like her husband, that's exactly right. All right, and now we're going to add our flour. So I've measured out a half a cup of flour. Like I said, this recipe is doubled because we have friends coming over. And who doesn't like cheesy potatoes, I'm just saying. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to kind of make a little paste here. I know if you guys watched the cracked chicken video, you saw me make paste like this before. This is the kind of paste you can eat, uh, contrary to the kind of paste you're not supposed to eat in kindergarten. Look at that. Oh, yeah. We've already got our paste going. Um, I like to add the salt next because I think it blends in better. So I'm going to do one teaspoon of salt here. Um, you can add this when you add your milk, but I like to just add it here. I think that it uh, gives it a little bit more of a chance because um, our milk is pretty cold. So this is a nice hot mixture to add your salt to. Now... <clears throat> If you were adding a very salty cheese like cheddar, I would say add less uh, salt, but we are doing a Kobe cheese tonight, and I think that, I think we're going to be just fine with this uh, correct amount of salt here. Of course, always salt it to your taste. You don't want to over-salt food, and if you're cooking for people with a uh, very particular palate, you're going to want to also take that into account. So we're going to just mix up this milk. I'm going to crank the heat up to a four. I have an electric stove here. Um, and the thing about making a roux is you want to keep an eye on it because it will burn quickly. Um, and then you're going to have to start over. And that's just a waste. So we just want to keep an eye on it, keep the mixture moving. And once it starts to thicken, that's when we're going to add our multiple cheeses. Okay, so one thing I would like to point out is when you're doing this portion of the sauce, uh, when you're really creating that roux, you're going to want to use a whisk. So I like a silicone whisk much better than a metal whisk. It's nicer to your pan, um, <clears throat> and I just like the way they wash better. So obviously use whatever you are comfortable with, but this will break up the flour mixture that's kind of already in here. Um, and keep your your uh, roux creamy. Okay, so our roux is nice and thick. I'm thinking, I hope you can see that. It's perfect. Um, so we are ready to go ahead and add the cheese, creating our delicious sauce. So we have two cups of shredded Colby cheese. Oh, and I, I... Um, press it down into the measuring cup. So it, you can do two cups. You know, I assume if you're not from Wisconsin, you probably don't want so much cheese. Um, but here in Wisconsin, when they say two cups, we mean compressed into a measuring cup. Like uh, it's hard to actually get out. It's kind of like a Dairy Queen blizzard. Look at that. So you're going to want to, um, you know, it's probably really four cups, but we're just going to call it two. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to kind of pull our cheese out like this and we're going to mix it in um, and we're going to create that sauce. And I am turning down my heat because I am fighting with my cheese, which means I did it right. <laughs> and for the cheese, honestly, I've done this, gosh, we've made this since I was probably uh, you know, five years old. So if you put it out in a big blob, that's okay. If you want to do it a little bit at a time, that's also okay. It's going to mix in. You've got enough um, of a hot uh, base here. It's going to melt. It's going to mix in. So I just like to plop it all in at once. And then we'll go ahead and keep mixing. This is at the point where I transition from my... Uh, slightly beaten up whisk over to a wooden spoon. Of course, you can use whatever type of utensil you like, but I think something sturdier is really helpful for me here. And honestly, I'm turning the heat off because I don't want it to burn. So, 
We're just going to go ahead and mix this in and watch it turn a beautiful orangish color. Now with the, whether you use cheddar or Kobe cheese, um, like I said, I like to compress mine and, and uh, you know, I basically have an extra cup or so of cheese in here than the recipe calls for. But I would warn you, a word of caution, when you do this grated Parmesan, it is a very strong flavored cheese. So if you put just a teeny bit too much in, it's going to overpower your sauce. So I actually do it a little bit less than it calls for. Um, so I'm right underneath that one cup mark and we're gonna just go ahead and put that in. I have never ever done this recipe with fresh grated Parmesan. I have only ever done this recipe with the pre-grated, uh, you know, purchase at the store already Parmesan. Um, that's a little bit dry. So I don't know what it would be like with fresh Parmesan. I assume flavor wise, it's about the same. It's going to be um, pretty strong, but you know, if it is something you try, I'd love to see in the comments, uh, what the difference is. So we're going to just let this kind of congeal all together here and I'm going to remove it from the heat and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut up those potatoes that we baked and then I'm going to get those added in here. So you saw us bake these potatoes and I told you you want them a little bit squishy. You can see there's still a whole potato but when you squeeze it, rah, 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 it does that. Um, the butter is nice and soaked in. You see how I said it pulls out those dark spots? That's exactly what it did here. We're going to go ahead and cut this up. Um, you can see how easy this potato is to slice. It's just like uh, slicing butter. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and it kind of quarters itself. So you want to keep your pieces a little bit big because you're going to stir these into that cheese sauce and if you cut them too small there they'll just disintegrate and you're gonna have you know cheesy potato soup. I'm gonna start adding these just into our mix. One of the best things about potatoes au gratin is uh, the way when you do it like this you can pre-mix this two days in advance of actually baking it. So we're only doing it the night before. I feel like if you do it earlier it sucks up more of that yummy cheese flavor um so i recommend doing it at least the night before if you want to do it a couple days before like for a thanksgiving or christmas holiday for today we're going to mix it all up together and then we're going to put it in a container and store it overnight all right so all the potatoes are in this crazy tiny bowl Hang on. oh are you losing stuff oh no not missing cheese did you just eat my missing cheese uh prove it <laughs> okay well, anyway, so we're going to, woo, I'm going to give you more missing cheese, apparently. Yeah. So we're just uh, stirring our taters into our sauce. We're not, you know, getting real aggressive with this. Like I said, you don't want uh, potato cheese soup. That's not what we're making. Um, we just want to make sure they're coated. So you can see they're all looking like they've got a nice coat of cheese on them. So... For our purposes today, like I said, we are going to go ahead and we are going to put this in a separate container. We're going to put it in the fridge overnight and then we are going to transfer it to the casserole dish uh, before we make it tomorrow. We took the potatoes at Groton out of the fridge. We let them sit for about 30 minutes and then we moved them to a disposable pan. Obviously, if you have a baking dish, you can use that, whatever you prefer. And then the oven is set at 350 degrees. What yes. did you do before you put them in the pan? Oh, we had to grease the pan. And why is that? Because otherwise cheese sticks to the pan when you bake it. Yes, it does. And it's good that way too. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, thank you. I forgot about that. The oven is set at 350 degrees. Um, we are also making turkey today, so there's really not enough space to put them on the middle or bottom rack. So I'm going to end up putting these in the top rack, and we're going to see how that goes. Um, it'll be fine. So uh, we are going to do that right now. Ooh. Ooh, you got it all fancy. 
Those are gonna cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. Uh, around the 30 minute mark, I would check them. What you want them to have is like a little bit of a golden brown all over the top, and you want them to be bubbling in the middle. So we'll be back. We baked these at 350 for 35 minutes, and actually because they were still a little bit cold, we ended up at 40 minutes. Um, to finish them off and get the brown top, I did a little bit of a broil at the end. Um, but they are definitely really hot all the way through, so they are ready to eat. Lava. They are cheese lava. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed watching me make uh, potatoes au gratin. This is the way that my mom did it growing up. So if you have any tweaks or changes that you like to see, um, please put them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and drop a comment. It helps grow our channel. Who would want to eat that paste, huh? What? Oh my god. Hey, this is what you get. This is where the channel falls apart. <laughs> you know what? At least I didn't put crayons in it. Ah! Uh -huh. All right. So. Uh, no, you could close? lean in a little closer. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, oh no, now you have me saying taters. It's taters. Ay, ay, ay. They're precious. All right, precious.